not practice on the guitar this week. Be true to the YYCPG crew. Practice hard, practice smart, no excuses. Brian here for Yes You Can Play Guitar, and I have my friend here today. I saw her play live a few years ago, and I was very impressed by her playing and the band she was playing with. This is my good friend Rose Del Campo from the Panther all-female tribute band, Cowgirls from Hell. Rose, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. Oh. So, uh, what have you been up to lately? Let's talk about that, and then we'll get into all the other stuff. Honestly, I've been just working. Yeah. <laughs> the last couple of years, I've just been working. Um, I'm a local university, and I've been enjoying it. Like, um, it's it's hard work, but it's it's fun. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you you did say uh, we'll talk about this a little later that uh, the band's been a bit on hiatus now because of uh, what's been going on in the world the past few years. Yes, uh, we've been we've been taking a break, and uh, partly because we haven't had a like good luck with the drummer, like finding a you know a permanent drummer, and also like I I've kind of been you know like burnt out for a little while, like with yeah. COVID and everything that kind of happened, like we've lost a lot of friends and all that. Mm. So, uh, but starting to get back into the fold again, listening to music. Again. Hopefully. I'm really glad to hear that for sure. Yeah. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about guitar, how you got started, what your influences were, all that other good stuff. Mm, how I started learning guitar was, I was in the Philippines. I grew up in the Philippines and I have an older brother who's like almost 10 years older than me. And he was playing guitar, acoustic like guitar. And he used to listen to like a lot of grunge, you know, like Nirvana mm -hmm. and Alice in Chains and all that stuff. And he listened to some Metallica too. I think he was playing like bass or something like that at uh, his, his band when he was in college. So I kind of got exposed to all that through him. And I begged him to teach me how to play, but I remember he taught me like four, like three chords, the D, A, and G. Okay. And I went from there. Once, um, you know, that, that website, 911 tabs and ultimate oh, guitar. Yeah. 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 That's kind of how I, I, you know, I taught myself to learn the songs that I wanted to learn. Cause it was, I thought uh, before the YouTube, uh, you know, instructional videos and all that, like that's where I, <laughs> that's where I learned. Okay. Um, yeah, with Metall Metallica songs and you know, alter alternative rock '90s songs and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you do you remember the first time you heard Pantera? Yes. Um, I remember. Um, I was watching VH1. Okay. It was like back. Then. I think I was. Uh, it, I was probably like seventeen, so I was pretty late in the game, and and they were doing some kind of documentary on. You know, and dime and all that mm -hmm. and i remember like um he he was i i don't remember everything from the document documentary but i remember his domination solo and and that kind of like gave me the chills and I, I just thought it was pretty amazing and i could never do it kind of like they they got on my radar since since that and okay. i just thought like for the longest time it's like one of those bands that i would never try to learn a song because i would just butcher it <laughs> i mean i probably still do every now and again but i just felt like they it was too sacred because you know that he we lost him and, you know, there's no one who could ever replace him and no it's true and you know like um I think one of the things with the Pantera fans are very passionate, you know, 
we were talking, I, I, I did a recent reaction video to uh, the reunion, the tribute, whatever you want to call it, doing Cowboys from Hell, and in the comments, a lot of people, we'll talk about this a little later, but the comments were saying some people weren't happy with Zach Wild and what he was doing, and other people were happy. And I was, so I, as, almost as a tongue-in-cheek, I, I posted a video saying, like, do you really think that Zach Wild failed the Pantera fans? And it it blew up and it got heated. And I think part of it, though, for a lot of people is is the tragedy of how Dimebag died and he was kind of taken from us. Uh, I think that's why people get uh, so triggered. But moving along, we'll talk more about that. But so so you, you started getting into bands. Were they metal bands or? Yeah, so I started getting into, like, of course, first of all, like Metallica and I learning some of their songs and I was learning some <laughs> some Guns N' Roses and kind of like you know the usual stuff the common stuff that um you know, metal has kind of get into yeah. the beginning um, into like classic rock like Zeppelin and um Iron Maiden probably Iron Maiden mostly <laughs> yeah. and um uh yeah cuz uh it was a lot of like VH1 stuff like Queen <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's what I when I well, that's what I was watching when I was at that age. Like I was working at place in Napa and like after work I would just watch it. Um yeah. so I would learn like some of their songs every now and again, like you know, Queen songs or Iron Maiden songs and mm -hmm. um I eventually found, you know, some friends who you know who knew how to play too and you know, that's kind of how I started to get into playing with with bands and people. Good. Did you ever um, go into a music store and play the intro to Sweet Child of Mine? Um, no, but I did play Stairway to Heaven, and I later okay. on uh, that that's not supposed to be done. Yeah, and same thing with the intro to One. I know that one uh, could get <laughs> on their nerves really quickly too. Um, yeah. So let's talk about uh, Cowgirls from Hell. How did all this kind of transpire? Like. Um, because uh, I think wasn't the band out of San Diego or California yes. somewhere? Um, so in one of our good friends, um, SD, he's a local musician. Yeah. And and he him with, with I think with Greg, they put on like some tribute shows, um, like fundraising shows so that they can donate um the some proceeds to a charity. Yeah. And usually it's like a Red, red for dime. It will be like a bunch of musicians playing Pantera songs for that show, or like um, like an '80s tribute. Well, it would be like songs from the '80s, and the musicians would just like kind of get up on stage and play '80s songs, um, like an open mic type. Um, and I remember I was still living in Anaheim, LA area, um, and. I got tagged in a post because they were looking. Um, he had an idea of like maybe having an all female group to play a Pantera song for that show that year. I think it was twenty fourteen, and um, I got tagged on it. And <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Like I, I was just so down to play at that time. Like I was mm -hmm. just you know I, I was like a yes man for you know, for a while. So I, I said I was down and the ones that were also down, um, I was familiar with Sam. She she played with she plays with Squirrely Arts and, you know, we've we've kind of been uh, familiar with each other, like playing in the same scene between LA O C and uh, Orange County and San Diego. Um, Wena, our bass player, was playing with Unicorn Death and my band infinite death would have played with them um in, in the same kind of genre in the same circle so i was kind of excited to like play with them have the yeah. opportunity um and our drummer christina she's also like a, a drum teacher and she's kind of like a math genius and so i was really excited to like just be in, surrounded by you know a lot of really good musicians um yeah. in the beginning we had two vocalist um cassie played the uh, sang the the clean parts because we did sh shedding skin so she sang this the clean parts and 
Sam did the growls. Um, and um, eventually later on, Sam, you know, so she ended up sticking around and um, oh. we continued on with her. Um, but the the group was originally originally called Pantitties. It was okay, it was kind of yeah. like a joke. <laughs> it yeah. was really goofy, yeah. but it was, it was <laughs> fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell everyone my story when I went to see uh, Cowgirls from Hell. So this is going back to 2017, and um, being in a tribute band is, is, is it's a completely different game than just you know playing some cover songs or um, so I've told a little bit on this channel a little over 20 years ago I got I got a phone call out of the blue from a, a, a touring Metallica tribute band I happened to play in a band with the bass player years before and they're like we're stuck our lead player he he's getting a divorce or he had to move away or something like something we have these three or four really important shows in two weeks can you do it so here I was woodshedding like 35 Metallica songs and solos uh, and I know the pressure that comes along with that. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, w one of my, uh, a, a friend of mine who's, he, he, we lost him last year, but he, uh, one of the best musicians I ever played with, he was in a dream theater tribute band. He was a keyboardist. And, uh, and, you know, he told me he did this dream theater tribute band and he was amazing. And this one night he made a tiny little mistake. And when he came off the show, like, and then the show was where people weren't saying, hey, man, great job. They, they had to point out that one little gets all the musicians. So going into that with Pantera, and, and to be honest, Rose, um, I think you guys had some promo videos. Yeah. And I, I think I saw it on Facebook. I said, oh, like there's a, uh, you know, it takes a lot for me to go out. I'm kind of somewhat antisocial, not in the crazy personality disorder thing, but I'm just, you know, I just like chilling out at home on the weekends and stuff. So it has to be something really interesting to tweak my interest to get me to go out. And uh, so I had some friends that were really into Pantera. We went to see it. And, um, uh, you know, I was a typical gu guitar player with my arms crossed, watching probably almost right in front of you like this. Um, but you guys played, man. It blew me away. I was, like, really surprised. And uh, we had a great time. And I wasn't drinking much, so I was had full clarity with your okay. playing. And, and there's different parts for different solos. I said, okay, this should be interesting. Oh my god! And I was like, "No, you did, you did fantastic." I was really legitimately going, "Holy geez, you know, like she really." Uh, um, and one of the interesting things too, maybe we'll talk about after, is your drummer wasn't there. You you guys had this fill-in guy from Montreal named Kevin, and he was amazing too. It was just it was just the most incredible thing. But at the end of the night, you know, I congratulated you. I said, "Hey, you did a great job. I'm a guitar player." Uh, at the time, I, I took a picture of us. I posted on my old Instagram account. But there's a creepy guy. I, he, I think he really liked you or something. So he was really bothering you. Like, I, I you know, I'm like, should I just kind of, I don't know what to do. Should I, like, anyway, I just, so I just said, well, I won't bug her. But this uh, this guy, I think he really liked you or something. He wouldn't leave you alone. Uh, I don't know if you remember that or not. Uh, it may have been another band member, I, but I, I heard from you. But uh, anyway, I, I thought you guys did a tremendous job. I, I was legitimately impressed. I thought, wow, you know, and for a Pantera thing, like the pressure on that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, so you're kind of shifting into being a tribute, uh, for Pantera. Um, first and foremost, I'm sure a lot of the guitar players will want to know, like, what did you find was the hardest Pantera song to learn rhythm wise? And what was the hardest solo? The hardest solo would probably be, oh, oh. they're all hard solo. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because it's like you know like you you play the walk solo yeah it's not as challenging as the domination solo but many people like no walk and it's like just being on the spot when the solo comes it's the same level of anxiety when I play the domination solo mm -hmm. and you know I've never, never ever played like a perfect perfect um, show ever wow. so it's like oh no like that that's gonna be online that's gonna you know so uh, um at that point kind of just like accept it you know like i'm never gonna sound exactly like that i'm never gonna be you know that perfect but as long as i give you know 
my friends, like just people up front, like the experience yeah. and how as long as everyone's having fun and you know, like we don't really get to hear Pantera songs out loud oh. in a live music setting and you know, and in a way I feel like grateful for having given the opportunity to give that to people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I really miss doing that. Like it was like a re- really a lot of fun and a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. So, well, you yeah. wouldn't know what you wouldn't know watching you on stage. And I watched with the critical guitarist eye. I thought you did fantastic. Like you wouldn't know that you were anxious at all when you're playing any parts. I thought you did incredible. Uh, but believe me, you know I do, I do this. It's funny because um, I have a very like transparent face like when I mess up you a lot of times people will know because I make a face and one of my friends was able to capture that it I, I could probably send you that face mm-hmm. that picture one one of these days but it's it's yeah <laughs> yeah no I, I you know I'll tell you a funny story too like so when I so this Metallica tribute and like I had done like gigs and stuff and bands and stuff but this was my first real professional gig at a big hall that held 800 a thousand people the big they had they had sound techs working there the big sound system lighting they had pyro they had everything you know and i remember the sound check being so nervous thinking you know i can see my truck out that back door i could grab my stuff and hop in the truck and just take off i was so nervous <laughs> but you know we pulled it off that night and you know like i mean i don't look like kirk hammond i'd have to you know stop working out and lose 100 pounds like but i just dressed in black and i played the parts but you know we had we had one one thing that night I don't know what was going on, but I couldn't hear. And we were starting fade to black and we had to restart it. Oh my God. And it wasn't fun, wasn't pleasant. But, and a lot you know, of people. Yeah. So, you know, things happen. A lot of happen. people probably looking forward to that. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, you know, it things do happen sometimes. But, like, you guys, you know, that night, you guys really were fantastic. I was really legitimately going, wow, like, this is. Uh, and you wouldn't have known it watching you playing. You wouldn't have known that. I nothing nothing gets by these ears, and I I didn't notice anything at all I'm out glad. of place with your playing. So no, you, I was really impressed. Um, so getting into that kind of dime mindset, um, let's talk a little bit about your gear. So what did you do to get mm-hmm. ready to uh, for performing that? Like, were you thinking, you know, this is another thing I'm going to bring up too, and we're just going to gently talk about it. Uh, you know, I, I did a reaction video to kind of the new lineup, the reunion, the tribute, whatever you want to call it, with Zach Wild. And I'm a Zach Wild fan. Like, I love Zach Wild. I loved his work in Ozzy. Um, he's not dime. They're very different guitar players. He doesn't have a Floyd Rose. There's, there's, they're very different guitar players. But I did a reaction video, and a lot of people were commenting saying, oh, he didn't have dimes. He should have had a solid state amp and not a tube amp, and he should have done this, should have done that. You know... It's just one of those things. But what was your mentality getting into that? Like, were you thinking, I need to get a solid state amp. I need to use the exact amp. Or so I remember your tones were pretty. Pardon my my French. Pretty bitching. They sounded great. <laughs> yeah, and and I feel when we went to Canada, we had to borrow gear, and you know, each show that we had, it was a different gear. You so, told me that. Um, you told. I remember you telling me that when we were talking. Yes. Okay. I remember that now. Yeah, and um, and I think that night in Ottawa, I had a JCM two thousand. I I I think I think it was a Marshall, and I really liked it. And I ended up getting one when I got home, and you know, like try like trying it out. But um, I ended up sticking with um, I used fifty one fifty EVH with yeah. six L sixes. Okay. And um, and partly because when I recorded with my original band infinite death um i my my friend has the the pv 5150 and i really love the tone so it's more like the range that it can do it could mm-hmm. it could do pantera tone justice and it could also like i also love the tone as it fit in my original band so um, it was kind of like, um, like it, it served both of my bands really well, and and I still love it. Like I would recommend it to everyone, pretty much. 
So I'm going to tell you another funny story. Um, it's not, it's not really a funny haha. It's just, it's just about the business and life. Um, so 20 years ago, I worked in a music store and I gave lessons in two different music stores. And one of the guys, one of the owners of the shops, uh, he, he was a really good guitar player. He was a very, he, he was a very good regional player. He loved Pantera. He went to see uh, Damage Plan a week before Dime was murdered. And his store, we carried the Randall line. So we had the Randall Warhead, we had the Randall. And he told me, because he was also he also was a sound guy. Uh, so this was in Ottawa at one of the big venues there. He went in and he watched, but he had the Warhead head with the stack there on stage. But then he said, well, where's the mic? And he looked off stage and he saw it was another Randall, but it was one that had a tube in it. And uh, uh, and it was the cabinet was being mic'd. What was the other one uh, it might have been that one that uh, Kirk Hammett and James Hetfield were using for a while. It was the Randall one where you can blend solid state with the tube overdrive. Oh, the uh -huh. Yeah, but he said, so he's really not using the warhead. Sorry, Randall. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we got a kick out of that. But uh, it, it was still Randall products, but it wasn't the actual warhead that was marketed it as his. He was using a different uh, Randall line. In it. But I think it was the one where you blend the... Um, the solid state with the tube so for all you guys out there saying you know you know maybe maybe dime did have some tube in his sound at some points in his career mm -hmm. but so uh, uh some of those things aren't always yeah, I know he, has like, he has like a very um kind of kind of scoop sound like it it, it almost reminds me of a razor blade yeah. <laughs> it just like feels like a razor when he plays that guitar yeah, um, exactly for sure. So, uh, so you use the EVH, uh, the fifty one. Sorry, kind of. Yeah, no problem. Yes, so I, I use the EVH fifty one fifty. Um, so I usually use the third channel all throughout most of the, most of the time, and like I kind of like do a lot, or I would say like. The lesser, the better. Cause, yes. um, I, cause I know I get like really distracted, <laughs> but when there's like a lot of stuff to like press. But I know um, a lot of my friends have, have um, kind of advised me like, oh, I should use a different channel for my solo so it pops up more. And I've tried that a couple of times, and it, and yeah, I can, like do it, did it on and off. But a lot of times I just stick with the third channel and just yeah. You know, Rose, that's did it uh, that way, so it's easier. <laughs> you know, th that's a big topic that comes up in a lot of the guitar channels. Um, I'm not a beer, a big gear guy. I'm like, good guitars, some a good amp, a few pedals, and away you go. Because some of the stuff out now, some of the modeling uh, things that are going on and stuff, I'm not saying to not use them, but sometimes you need like a PhD from university to learn how to even turn them on and program them. I think what, what a lot of people don't understand is when you're playing live, especially, uh, you know, to a rowdy audience, uh, to a drinking audience, people get up on stage, people spill beer, things, people stage, them, <laughs> people yeah. crash into the stage. So if you have, you know, a, a fancy foot, uh, foot controller uh, and it gets stepped on and the adapter breaks, what are you going to do? If you have a boss pedal and someone steps on the adapter, you just pull it out of the chain and keep going. And you could probably buy the mm -hmm. boss pedal for used for, you know, 80 bucks or a hundred bucks somewhere. So you're just out that, mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm more for being practical. And I noticed, uh, and I have the pictures here and I'll have them up here during the interview. Like you, you keep a pretty simple setup. It's very similar to what I would use. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, I usually have an effects loop plugged into the back of my amp and, and I, you, I put the hall of fame, um, TC Electronic Hall of Fame reverb on there and the delay pedal flashback. Okay. Um, and I kind of just like turn it on off during usually solos or clean parts. Yeah. And just to kind of keep it simple. And with um at, at the front, like where I where I'm usually stationed, it's you know pretty basic. Like I have my tuner. Yeah. I know no specific order. I have my tuner, my suppressor, 
um, I have this cheap Ibanez um, TS9 tube screamer. Yep. Um, I don't know if the 5150 really needed it, but I just have it there just in case. Like, so there are there are times where my battery for my um, uh, pickup kind of died, and the tube screamer saved me. Right. Um, yeah. So I have the wah pedal, uh, the yeah, the so, crybaby um, from the, hell the, one. Yes, exactly. Um, so, like for the tube screamer, you would kind of add that when you're playing a solo. Just for that extra little bit of bite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I I like it really midi mm -hmm. kind of. Um, so um that kind of helps um beef it up a little bit. Yeah. Um and my backup my my backup ones are like the the 44 Magnum power amp in case my head head um blows up or whatever yeah. and then have the ev 5150 overdrive um so when like if i had to use a different head i'll just plug that in to yeah. through the like clean channel or whatnot and get this the similar evh tone from it yeah um to kind of be a little bit more mobile with it without having to bring so much yeah. stuff <laughs> And, but I think you're kind of from the same school I am. Simpler is better. And, um, uh, you know, like when you're getting ready for a show, especially if you're traveling and you guys have made some big travels, uh, you don't want to be setting stuff up right till the minute before you go on stage. It's nice just to get set up, sound check, and relax. Yeah. Right? Definitely. So let's just... And now, um, I remember when... Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. You go ahead, please. Um, I remember when uh, when we went to to Canada, our first show was Montreal, and um, I was super worried about you know the gear situation because I was really attached to my fifty one fifty, um, but it was kind of kind of like an adventure in a way because I got to try like the. I forgot what kind of Randall head it was, but I feel like that was the closest tone I, I ever got to Dime's tone. Like whenever I saw some of those Montreal videos that we made, what the, you know, someone took a video of our, sh our, our show and I thought it was really, really cool that, you know, we got that tone from, you know, from someone else's head. And, and then the, we were able to get to, we were able to try the, JCM 2000, and that one I really liked too. It was cool. It was an adventure. Yeah. And we have to say too, like when you guys play, came to Canada, you had this guy, Kevin. Uh, I follow him on Instagram. Uh, he, he sat in on the drums, and you guys had never practiced or played, and, and he was amazing. Like I have to tell you, I was just like, man, like that drummer, he's just killer. Yeah, Um. It, it was a pretty stressful situation, but Kevin like saved us like oh. um I guess a couple of days before before we left for Canada our the drummer that we contracted to play with us kind of you know canceled on us, but it was like it's like do we gotta go to a different country? We got all these shows booked and all these contracts, so. Yeah we decided to like okay like uh hail mary in a way to like look for another drummer who could possibly pay, play pantera um preferably in montreal because that was our first show it would be it would make the most sense so we got so lucky with kevin oh. and there's like a lot of stress there but like a lot of faith was put and Kevin and, and I'm glad that it oh all worked God. out. And and whoever mixed the sound that night at the club, I saw you guys at that it just sounded, but he just it, it, you wouldn't <laughs> have known that you guys hadn't played together. It was it was that good. He he was really incredible. <laughs> um so let's just let's just you know <laughs> Yeah, let's just uh, have an honest chat here about like what what kind of pressure were you feeling? Like what would you know, did you get good feedback? Was there some I don't mean from the guitar and the amp, I mean from people watching uh, we know that the Pantera fans are very passionate. So were they pretty hard on you at times? Um, I know social media is pretty vicious. Yeah. And it, it, uh, took, it took some time for me to kind of like 
adjust and you know it, like people say stuff that they wouldn't tell you in person definitely oh. um but usually at our shows you know like we you know we get the crowd going we give them an experience and you know we try to you know give it our 100% and you know i'm not a the most energetic person but i try to be when i'm on stage and stuff so it's just like having fun with with what we have on stage and what you know oh and the songs that we could like deliver to people and have them i guess to put it to put it um sorry okay. i i couldn't like put into words um it's more like like um we could we could never play pantera you know 100% perfect so there's always going to be people who are not going to like it especially online yeah. um but having the privilege of like hearing pantera songs and in a live music setting and having the privilege of being able to give that to people you know it's pretty rewarding and fun and as long as everyone's like having fun and yeah staying safe while having fun you know like in those mosh pits and stuff even <laughs> with these broken bottles and whatnot yeah, it's kind of like you know the the experience it's it, it's good experience well you know i think it wasn't just me that was skeptical uh when you guys went on i think there's a lot of people in the club like but at the end you guys won everyone over i remember at the end a lot of people well you had a creepy guy there trying to uh, get your number um but there's a lot <laughs> you won everyone over and you and, and people were really happy with the show i remember that everyone was just like man that was so cool because i think a lot of people were in like oh i don't know man a panther tribute Ooh, what's going to happen here so uh yeah yeah so you guys had some sponsorships and, and you know um, um we we did i don't know if it's been a while and i haven't really played so i don't know if it's still current but um i still stand by <laughs> by the like clear tone strings like i okay. i've always used them and, like i swear i i've gone like maybe eight months without changing the strings on my ltd and it's still like play like brand new and and, and yeah, I stand by them. So, do they, do they have a they're great them? strings. I know they're quoted. So many people reference to it. Hmm, um, I use the LTD M1000. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's coded strings. Okay. And um, and I use the the five tens on my LTD, and the size nines on my Jackson RR3. Um. And I don't, I don't really have like expensive gear either. Like I, I bought my LTD for sale at like on sale at Sam Ash for like 500 bucks with a free case and stuff. And I thought it was really cool because it's still, it, it looks really nice and it still plays really well. Um, yeah. I, um, the, uh, the EMGs on those are 8160 and the Jackson RR3, it's 8181. Oh, good. And you know, on that note, I just want to kind of intervene here with this, too. Uh, when, when you say about, you know, I know a lot of people who have really expensive guitars, but they can't play. You know, so I think sometimes, uh, you know, people buy guitars because for the sake of being expensive. But I've tried some really expensive guitars, and sometimes I'm not impressed. That, that Jackson V, the demolition, it's the lower end one. It's a mm -hmm. bolt-on neck. I'm not a neck-through-body kind of guy. I never could get into that on guitar for some mm -hmm. reason. And, uh, you know, I got that used for $750. I think brand new, they, they retail for over $1,500. Um, oh, wow. I bought it from a musician on, on um, uh, it wasn't Reverb. I forget what it was, but he just, and I had to drive eight hours to get it. But he just said, I said, why are you selling it? It's a great guitar. He said, dude, I got to pay the rent. <laughs> So, okay. So sometimes it's not always how expensive the guitar is. I'm kind of with you on that. Some of my best guitars, I've made really good deals buying them used. And mm -hmm. uh, I, they sound good and I play them fine. So, uh, uh, and believe me, your tone sounded great that night when I heard you guys play. So, um, thank you. 
Yeah, well, you're very welcome. Um, so let's talk now. Uh, you know, we'll kind of approach the topic of what's going on with Pantera now. Now, you know, I, it, Pantera can never really be Pantera without Dimebag uh, and, and Benny. Like, we, we know that, okay? And I don't want to speak for Rose for that, but we know, and people will be commenting and stuff. But uh, what, what are your feelings about uh, them now with what they're doing? Um, so I'm like having never seen Pantera before, like I was really stoked to hear that, you know, they're going to tour and, and Zach's going to be there and you know, Charlie and it's, you know, it's like to me, you know, as a new generation, I guess, to, of Pantera fans who've never seen Pantera, it's, you know, it's pretty great to have that opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I know I've I've seen some of those videos too that you know people didn't really like how how Zach um, delivers on the songs and like I can I could totally relate because you know I've had people say that about me online too when you know whenever there's a new new video or whatever we have. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I probably mentioned it earlier. Like, no one's gonna ever play like Dime. Like, no. it's never gonna sound like that. Yeah. And you know, like we we've listened to these Pantera songs for like years and years, like hundreds of times. So we have these like preconceived notions of like, okay, we're expecting this note to come up. We're expecting this squeal to come up, like you know, any yeah. minute. But when it doesn't come up because someone else is playing, we get disappointed. So I kind of get it. Um, so it, you know, there's um there's a lot of argument, like, a lot of polarity with that. So I'm like personally, like I would, I'm just excited to like see them. I'm just happy to see them. Yeah, and um, that... we're gonna see them in August in San Diego. Okay, and uh, are they opening up for Metallica or? Oh, um, it would just be them and Lamb of God. I think the night before is um, them with Metallica, okay. but I don't think I could afford that. You, you can't afford the seventy two hundred dollar uh, Lux, the seventy two hundred dollar Lux Eterno <laughs> VIP package. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I wish I could. I did a video about that, and I said I don't care if you're the president, the prime minister, or the pope. Nobody worth that kind of money to me. So, uh, but um, but yeah, no. Uh, so, in that video I posted, the comment section it's 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 almost like it took on a life of its own. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because Zach doesn't he doesn't use the whammy bar, so I can understand like in certain parts, like uh, like if they did Cemetery Gates, you know, when he has to get the, but you know. Um, this love, it's really tuned down. Like Phil's older now, like for singing. So it's harder sometimes when mm -hmm. you're aged to hit, you know, so there's some little things there. But to me, I, I said that in my video, I said, Hey, I've, I, I've been a Pantera fan since 1990. You know, uh, I, I went to Columbus. I did a, my own little tribute at the club where, you know, Dime was murdered. I know, is it exactly what Dime would have done? No, but, um, you know, I'm just happy to see the name doing something. And, you know, people took that whichever way they wanted uh, when they talked about it. But uh, as a fan, I'm just glad to see them doing something. And, of course, Charlie Benante, you know, in Anthrax, he was always a monster drummer. He does. He, he's amazing. But, you know, my friend that I was telling you about uh, who, who went to see Damage Plan a, month, a week before Dime got murdered, and he looked around the corner and he saw where he, what he was actually playing through. Uh, he told me, we talked about this a few weeks ago, he said it wouldn't matter who they got in on guitar, somebody would have a problem with something. Yeah, exactly. So Yeah, it, so, that's 100%. Yeah. So, Rose, so what What do you think, uh, you know, I, I know it's kind of, we're going through weird times with what's been going on in the world and everything, but um, I, I do know what it's like when people kind of burn out for music or they need a break, um, but... Do you, do you see, do, are you feeling the urge to uh, get back at it and uh, play and maybe do that again? Um, it's going the right direction. Like I was telling you uh, earlier how, you know, like during COVID, like I probably didn't listen to music at all for like 
two two years straight when I drive my car like nothing's playing it drove my family crazy like we'll be on long drives and nothing's playing I couldn't listen to Pantera for a really really long time I couldn't play Pantera songs for a really really long time and, and a lot of that was, you know I mentioned my my friend passed away and he was a really nice guy and um, I, I could hear his voice in like those Pantera songs and I couldn't like continue listening. So for, for a long time, I felt that way. So it, in, in a way, like now I'm like kind of get coming out of that. So it's going the right direction. Like I am able to kind of um, get past it and listen again and go through our set and, and kind of like refresh because I, I know like you don't lose it you lose if you don't use it you lose it you know yeah. like I it's hard to like relearn those songs again and yeah not um, getting younger <laughs> yeah um are, but, do you still, but yeah do you still keep in touch with the other band members yeah yeah definitely like we we always like um I know me and Sam would run it into each other at um, at shows and me and Wena will like just randomly hang out every now and again, and we're, we have less standing group chat. That's like we'll we'll check in on each other every now and again. And mm-hmm. I know Wena just got married um, two years ago, and like, we we uh, kind of kind of was a low key maid of honor, I guess, or maid without honor because there was. It was, there was no honor in it. I was just like her slave. But it was fun. Like, it was really fun. Like, we love arts and crafts, so we kind of just went all out with it. And, okay. yeah, it was really, we still keep in touch, and we're all good friends. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to um, hear that. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that yeah. like, the, the desire to play has come back. I've, you know, I've had a, a burnout period in my life. I didn't even touch a guitar for over two years. Um, but uh, I'm really glad to hear that you guys were... Uh, that you're getting the desire to play back. And for me personally, I, again, like, you know, I really enjoyed watching you guys play and it's kind of, it's a nice way just to keep that music going. No, no one can play exactly the way Dime did, but I thought your interpretation was quite good and you guys put on a really good live show. It'd be really awesome to see you guys uh, on stage again. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to say to everyone before we sign off? Um, well, thank you for having me here and listening in. Like, I'm really like nobody, I'm just a regular person. Like, um, you're doing my regular stuff, and I'm I'm happy to you know share share my story with you and share yeah. my gear and my experience playing you know Pantera for a little while for you know for people. Um, and yeah, just. Well, you know, Be we all out there. We all... I'd like to share, um, like Sam, our vocalist also has a, a project called Squirrely Arts. They're pretty amazing industrial band, industrial metal, and um, and my old project before Infinite Death. Um, if you can, um, give them a listen. They're pretty awesome guys. Um, Wena is a huge video game fan, so. Um, she plays in this pretty awesome video game band called Vic Viper, and yeah, give them a a like. We all love Pantera, and that's a bond that we all have. You know, whether people agree, disagree, it's because we care and we're passionate about the band and the music. So, Rose, thank you so much for uh, joining us again. I'm really hoping, you know, if you guys come to Ottawa or Montreal, I hope you guys let me know because I'll definitely go for sure. Definitely. Well, well, we love Canada. Like, I want to go back there and one of these days, and it would be even better if we're going to go back there playing some shows and stuff. Did you guys and get to some, try and some, have some uh, poutine? Poutine, yes. Yeah, so that's some what poutine. I was going to ask you. You got to have some poutine? Did you yeah, have it in it was, Montreal? Yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. And and one of the things that was that really blew me away was it was so random. I don't know, it, the best tomatoes I've ever tasted in my yeah. life was from Canada. 
for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> well, well, you know, this is a whole other discussion. Uh, maybe if I start a food channel, we could talk about this. But Montreal has is, is a very well-known uh, dining for some of the best dining and eating places. So uh, it's, a, it's a great city to go to mm -hmm. for a weekend and try some different cuisine for sure. But Rose, uh, again, I really love seeing you guys on stage. Uh, again, uh, Pantera, with, with the tribute that's going on, made me remember your band. And uh, just the love we all have for Pantera. And I know in the comments a few people mentioned you. And uh, again, uh, if you guys play again in the area, please let me know. And remember, guys, practice hard, but practice smart. And we'll see you soon.